Hello and welcome back. The title of this video is The Black British Power Movement Part 1. This is going to be a lengthy video so I decided to divide it into parts. The Black British Power Movement was the movement that succeeded the British Civil Rights Movement. It was working class focused and more radical as they believed in self-determination and liberation, something that goes beyond equality. Even though there had been progress in race relations, e.g. the passing of the Race Relations Act and the establishment of a Race Relations Board, racial pre prejudice was rife and was at most times backed by the state and by the police. The fall of Campaign Against Racial Discrimination card, in which I mentioned in my previous video, the British equivalent of the NAACP was due to its bourgeois liberal nature and inclusion of white liberals at leadership positions who would at many times trust the state to solve racism. This alienated many racialized individuals because black and Asian communities were overwhelmingly working class, poorer than white people and many could not rely on the state to fight against racism when it's the state that perpetuates institutionalized racism against those very people. Additionally, many people became influenced by the black power movement in the USA, especially when Stokely Carmichael, aka Kwame Ture, visited London in 1967 to give a speech at the London Roundhouse in Camden at an international conference called Dialectics of Liberation Congress, organised between July 15th and 30th, 1967. This was part of his world tour where he promoted his book Black Power and the Politics of Liberation that he co-authored with Charles V. Hamilton. The context of 1960s Britain was that there was a weak black power movement. From 1961 to 1964, the black population increased from 300,000 to 1 million. While their population grew, racism grew too. So did the intensity towards black people. Racism became part of society. Politicians like Peter Griffiths, a conservative, even used racist rhetoric to win elections. He used the slogan, if you want an N-word neighbour, vote Labour. This helped him win a parliamentary seat in Smethwick, Birmingham, 1964. This was the same place that Malcolm X visited in February 1965 when he went to Birmingham University and was then due to go to the London School of Economics. This was the second time he came to Britain as the first time he went to the Oxford Union for a debate. As Malcolm X arrived in the area, he said, I have heard that they are being treated as the Jews were under Hitler. They, of course, referring to the African, Caribbean and Asian communities and their poor treatment by English people. Racist insults and hostility remained deep. Bricks were thrown by whites. Racist graffiti was strongly present. Living in the West Midlands as a colonised folk meant you were living in slum-like conditions, overcrowded with a lack of basic necessities because of the racist attitudes of both public and private landlords. Smethwick was very much segregated at the time. White people lived in a completely different street called Marshall Street and even though a Tory won, the Smethwick Labour Club also supported the colour bar in which I mentioned in the previous video. So it was not like attitudes from, uh, to non-whites were split on party lines. This forced non-whites to seek support and solidarity overseas. Racism became legally institutionalised through legislation like the Commonwealth Act, Immigration Act of 1962, which controlled the immigration of all Commonwealth passport holders, with the obvious intention of limiting the migration of black people in Britain. Racism became, quote unquote, institutionalised, legitimised and nationalised in 1960s Britain. The Indian Workers Association gave Malcolm X a tour of Smethwick, at the same time, he was followed by a group of journalists and a BBC camera crew. However, this visit did not get aired until decades later. During his tour, he saw a pub that said no blacks on its window and churches. The association then took to him to a pub that was popular amongst, Asian, amongst the Asian community in the area and was greeted with unwavering, unwavering support from the Asian locals. 
Malcolm X was also taken to Marshall Street and was heckled by its English residents. They told him that they did not want any black people living in Smethwick. According to some eyewitnesses, as the white people heckled at him, the, colonial the colonised racialized folk loudly proclaimed their support for Malcolm X. Malcolm X did not respond to the aggression he faced as he continued to quietly walk through the street. Another incident that happened later that day was that he was removed from Blue Gate pub for not being white after tasting their English ale, despite being Muslim. But Smethwick today is very different and does not have that notoriety of racism anymore. Sam Moore of Verso Books described Smethwick in the present day. Pubs have been converted into curry houses. Polish supermarkets, Turkish barbers and Indian sari shops have popped up all over town. Black, brown and white live together side by side, side by side in relative harmony. The largest Sikh temple in all of Europe stands proudly in Smethwick, a lush middle finger to the apocalyptic hatred of Griffiths, Powell and other racist demagogues. This doesn't mean there isn't any racism in the area, but it's not how it used to be. The civil rights movement was stronger than the black power movement, but hope was lost. I mentioned CARD, which was a prominent group during the civil rights movement. CARD disbanded in 1967 because black members disagree with the fact white liberals continue to work within the machinery of the state to secure racial equality, even though this method had been proven ineffective. Black people did not trust the state at all, and it was Kwame Ture's visit and speech that influenced the future of the black people's movement. Shortly before his visit, Nigerian poet Obi Egbuna, who lived in London, founded the Universal Coloured People's Association in 1967. He also founded the British Black Panther Movement in 1968. The UCPA originally allowed white members in the association as they initially went for a moderate approach, civil rights style, for their organisation. However, within the week of Touré's speech, the UCPA expelled all of its white members and adopted the ideology of black power. Writing in 1971, Egbuna described Kwame Touré's visit as being like manna from heaven and that it was not until Stokely Carmichael's visit in the summer of 1967 that black power got a foothold in Britain. Touré was subsequently banned from entering Britain and within the month, Michael X, not to be confused with Malcolm X, a controversial black power radical, was arrested for inciting racial hatred. Egbuna also wrote a manifesto for the UCPA called Black Power in Britain. Kwame Ture spoke about his vision for self-determination and internationalist solidarity too. For him, black power was an internationalist struggle. It wasn't just about racial equality in the US, it was also standing in solidarity with the black people of the third world. He explained that black power meant black people see themselves as part of a new force sometimes called the third world, that we see our struggle as closely related to liberation struggles around the world. He saw black Britons as an important part of a global militant majority and emphasised on anti-imperialism which appealed to many black Britons who fought for independence in Africa and the Caribbean before immigrating to Britain. Kwame Ture pushed for socialism as he told the audience that capitalism and racism go hand in hand. The Black Power movement strengthened in 1970s Britain. Starting in London, the movement expanded to other urban areas of the UK, like Manchester, Birmingham, Bradford, Liverpool and Bristol. More organisations like the Black Parents Movement, Black Youth Movement and the Black Liberation Front were created. These organisations helped to create community workshops as well as to defend the rights of black people, black parents and black students and black students in education elsewhere. We shall go through different groups that existed in the black British power movement. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been part one and uh, another part will be uploaded in a few days. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and donate to my PayPal.